Many people see life as a fight, but it's really more like a game. This game, on the other hand, can't be played well without understanding spiritual law. The Old and New Testaments make the rules of the game very clear. Jesus Christ taught that giving and getting was a fun game. What a person plants, he will also harvest. This means that whatever a person says or does will come back to him. He will get back what he gives. He will get hate back if he gives it. He will get love if he gives it. He will get criticism if he gives it. He will be lied to if he does. People will cheat him if he does it. Another thing we learn is that the image ability is very important in real life. Be very careful with your heart or mind, because that's where life's problems come from. Proverbs 4.23 This means that what a person imagines will eventually show up in his life. I know a man who was afraid of getting a certain sickness. It was a very rare and hard to get disease, but he kept picturing it and reading about it until it showed up in his body and killed him, the person whose mind is messed up. So, we can see that we need to train our image skills in order to do well in the game of life. If you train your mental faculty to see only good, everything good you want will come into your life. Good health, money, love and friends. Perfect self-expression was his most important goal. People have called the imagination the scissors of the mind, and it always cuts. Man cuts down the pictures he sees every day, and eventually he meets his own works in the outside world. To train the imagination well, a person needs to know how his mind works. It was said by the Greeks, know thyself. The mind is made up of three parts, the superconscious, the aware, and the subconscious. The subconscious is just power that doesn't know what to do. It works the way you tell it to, like electricity or steam. It doesn't have any inductive power. Whatever a person deeply feels or clearly imagines is stored in his inner mind and carried out down to the smallest detail. One woman I know always pretended to be a widow when she was a child. People thought she was very smart and funny because she dressed up in black and wore a long black hat. She grew up and married a man she loved very much. He died soon after, and she wore black and a long veil for many years. She subconsciously held on to the image of herself as a widow, and in time it worked itself out, no matter how much trouble it caused. The mind that is aware of things has been called human or physical mind. It is the mind, and it sees things as they really are. In its sights, it finds death, disaster, sickness, hunger, and all kinds of limits. This deeply affects the subconscious mind. The superconscious mind is where all of our best thoughts live. It is like having God in your head. Plato talked about the perfect pattern as the divine design, and it's in it. There is a divine design for everyone. You are supposed to do something that no one else can do or fill a role that no one else can fill. In the superconscious mind, there is a perfect picture of this. It generally comes to mind as an impossible goal or something that is too good to be true. In fact, it is man's true fate or goal that has been shown to him by his own infinite wisdom. But a lot of people don't know what their real paths are, so they try to get things and situations that don't belong to them and would only make them unhappy and unsuccessful if they got them. So, one woman came to me and asked me to say the word that she was going to marry a man she loved very much. He was called A, but I said I would speak for the right man, the divine pick, the man who was divinely entitled to be with her. This would be against spiritual law, I said. I also said, if A.B. is the right man, you won't lose him, and if he's not, you'll get someone like him. She saw A.B., they talked a lot, but their friendship didn't get any better. She called one night and said, Did you know that for the past week, A.B. hasn't seemed so great to me? I answered, Maybe he is not the divine selection. Soon after, she met another man who instantly fell in love with her and told her she was the one. He actually said everything she had always wished for, A.B. would tell her. She said, 
That was pretty strange. She quickly returned his love and stopped caring about A.B. This proves the law of replacement. Because a good idea was used instead of a bad one, there was no loss or sacrifice. Jesus Christ said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. He also said that the kingdom was inside each person. The kingdom is the place where good ideas live, or where God's plan is followed. Jesus Christ taught that what people say is the most important thing in life. By your words, you are justified, and by your words, you are condemned. A lot of bad things have happened to people because they said pointless things. For instance, a woman once asked me why her life was now poor and limited. She used to have a house, lots of nice things around her, and a lot of money. We found that she was often fed up with taking care of her home, and had said over and over, I'm sick and tired of everything, I wish I lived in a trunk. She even said, today I am living in that trunk. She had talked herself into a trunk. People often make fun of bad things that happen to them, but their subconscious mind doesn't understand humor. One woman who had a lot of money joked all the time that she was getting ready for the poorhouse. In just a few years, she was almost homeless because she had ingrained in her mind a picture of lack and limits. The good news is that the law can change a lack of something into plenty of something. One hot summer day, for example, a woman came to me for help with getting rich. She was tired, sad, and down on herself. She told him that she only had eight dollars on her. I told them, great, let's bless the eight dollars and multiply it like Jesus Christ did with the loaves and fishes. Jesus taught that everyone had the power to heal and succeed, bless and multiply. What should I do next? She asked. I told her, go with your gut. Do you feel like you should do something or go somewhere? If you want to learn something from within, that's what intuition means. It is man's reliable guide, and I will discuss its rules in greater detail in the next chapter. I don't know, the woman said. I have a feeling that I should go home, and I have just enough money for the train fare. Her home was in a faraway city that was full of lack and limitation. A logical mind would have told her to stay in New York and get a job to make some money. But I told her to follow her gut and go home. I said these words for her. Infinite spirit, open the way for great abundance for. She is an irresistible magnet for all that is hers by divine right. I told her to say it over and over again. She left right away for home. She met an old family friend when she called on a woman one day. In the most amazing way, she got thousands of dollars through this friend. Tell people about the woman who came to you with eight dollars and a hunch, she told me many times. Lots of good things are always coming to people, but they can only happen if they want them or believe they can. Jesus Christ made it clear that people need to take the lead. Matthew 7.7 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. The Bible says, Concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. God, who is infinitely smart, is always ready to do what people want, no matter how big or small. Every wish, whether it's spoken or not, is a demand. Having a wish come true out of the blue often surprises us. One Easter, I saw many beautiful rose trees in the florist's shops and wished I could get one. For a split second, I imagined it being carried in the door. A lovely rose tree came with Easter. The next day, I thanked my friend and told her it was exactly what I had wanted. The woman answered, I didn't send you a rose tree. I sent you lilies. The man had messed up the order and sent me a rose tree because I had started the law and had to have one. Fear and uncertainty are the only things that stand between man and his greatest goals and every heart's wish. When people can wish without thinking, their every wish will come true right away. The science reason for this and how fear needs to be erased from the mind will be given more attention in the next chapter. Fear of not having enough 
failing, getting sick, losing something, or just feeling unsafe on some level, is man's only enemy. In Matthew 8.26, Jesus Christ asked, Why are you afraid, you weak souls? We can see that we need to replace our fear with faith, since fear is just faith turned upside down, faith in evil instead of good. In the game of life, the goal is to see your good clearly and get rid of all images of your bad. To do this, you need to make the inner mind remember something good. I talked to a very smart and successful man who said that reading a sign in a room had suddenly taken away all emotion of fear. He saw the words, Why worry? It will probably never happen, written in big letters on his subconscious mind. These words have seared themselves into his mind forever, and he is now sure that only good can enter his life and appear. The next part will talk about the different ways to make an impression on the subconscious mind. It is a good helper, but you have to be careful to tell it what to do. Your inner mind is always there to listen to you. It takes on every thought and word and does them with amazing accuracy. It's like a singer recording on the phonograph plate's responsive disc. It picks up every note and tone of the singer's voice. Also, if he coughs or hesitates, that is picked up. So, let's erase all the old bad records in our subconscious minds that we don't want to keep and make new, beautiful ones. Say out loud, I now destroy and smash with my spoken word every false record in my subconscious mind. They will go back to the dust heap of their original nothingness because they came from my own useless imaginations. Here I am, making perfect records through the Christ within me. These are records of health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the life square. The game is over. I will show you how to change your life by changing the words you use. People who don't understand the power of words are behind the times. As Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Chapter 2 is called The Law of Prosperity. 2. The Law of Joy and Wealth Yes, the Lord will protect you, and you'll have plenty of silver. The religious texts have one of the most important lessons for people. God is their source, and people can speak out and let go of everything that is divinely theirs. He must, however, have full faith in what he says. Isaiah said, My word will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what it is sent to do. We now know that words and thoughts have a huge vibrational force that shapes people's bodies and lives all the time. A very upset woman told me she was going to be sued for $3,000 on the 15th of the month. She was hopeless because she didn't know how to get the money. I told her that God was making things for her and that there is enough to go around. That's why I spoke. I thanked God that the woman would get the $3,000 at the right time and in the right way. I told her she had to have perfect faith and show it. When the 15th came around, there was still no money. She called me up and asked what she should do. I told them, since it's Saturday, they won't sue you today. Your part is to act rich, which will show that you have full faith that you will get it by Monday. She asked me to lunch with her to keep her strength up. I told her, this is not the time to save money when I met her at a restaurant, order a fancy lunch and act like you already have the $3,000. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it. To receive, you must act as if you already had it. She called me the next morning and asked me to spend the day with her. No, I told her, God is watching over you and it's never too late. That night she called again, very excited and said, my dear, a miracle has happened. The doorbell rang this morning while I was in my room. Tell the maid not to let anyone in. The maid, on the other hand, looked out the window and said, That's your cousin with the long white beard. I told her to call him back because I wanted to see him. He was just around the corner when he heard her voice and came back. After talking for an hour, he asked, Oh, by the way, how are finances? He said, Why, my dear, 
I will give you $3,000 the first of the month. I didn't want to tell him I was going to be sued, but I did. What should I do? It won't come until the first of the month, but I need it tomorrow. I told him, I'll keep treating you. It's never too late. Thank God she got the money on the invisible plane and that it shows up on time. The next morning, her cousin called her and said, come to my office this morning and I'll give you the money. By that afternoon, she had $3,000 in the bank and was writing checks as fast as she could because she was so excited. If you want to succeed and are ready for loss, you will get what you were planning for. One time, a man asked me to say the word so that he would no longer have to pay a bill. He seemed to be planning what he would say to the man if he didn't pay his bill, which made my words less important. He should have thought about how he could pay the bill. A great example of this can be found in the Bible, where three kings were in the desert without water for their horses and men. They talked to the prophet Elisha, who told them this amazing thing. Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, but make this valley full of ditches. People have to get ready for what they want, even when there isn't a sign of it. An example is a woman who had to look for an apartment in New York during a year when there weren't many available. People thought it was almost impossible, and her friends felt bad for her and asked, Isn't it too bad you'll have to store your stuff and live in a hotel? She told him, don't feel sorry for me. I'm Superman, and I'll get an apartment. She then said, Infinite Spirit, make way for the right apartment. She knew there was a supply for every demand, that she was spiritually pure, and that being one with God is the majority. She was thinking about buying new blankets when the negative thought or reasoning mind told her, Don't buy the blankets. Maybe you won't get an apartment after all, and you won't need them. She quickly told herself, I'll save money by buying the blankets. So, she got ready for the place and pretended to have it all ready. As if by magic, she found one and was given it. Even though over 200 other people had also applied, the blankets were a sign of faith in action. There's no need to say that the three kings' ditches in the desert were completely full. Read two kings. For most people, it's not easy to get into the spiritual swing of things. Bad thoughts like doubt and fear come up from deep inside. They are the alien enemy that needs to be pushed away. Because of this, it is often the darkest before dawn. Thoughts of pain normally come before a big show. Once a person says something that is deeply spiritually true, it questions the old beliefs that are stored in their mind revealing errors that need to be fixed. Now is the time to say these truths over and over again, and to be happy and thankful for what you have already gotten. Before you call, I will answer. This means that every good and perfect gift is already man's, and just needs to be recognized. Man can only get what he imagines getting. People told the Israelites that they could have all the land they could see. This is true for all men. The only thing he can see is the land in his mind. Every great work and big accomplishment has been made possible by staying true to the goal. Often there is clear failure and disappointment right before the big accomplishment. When the Israelites got to the promised land, they were scared to go in because they heard it was full of giants who would squish them down to size. And there we saw the giants, and we were small in their eyes. Almost all men have had this experience, but someone who knows spiritual law is not affected by how things look and is happy even though he is still being held captive. In other words, he stays true to his vision and is grateful that the goal has been reached. This was shown very well by Jesus Christ. He told his followers, Do you not say that there are still four months until the harvest? Look up and look at the fields, they are already ready to be harvested, he said. His clear vision cut through the world of matter and let him see the fourth dimensional world where things are perfect and whole in God's mind. So, man must always hold the vision of the end of his journey and demand that what he has already gotten come to life. His perfect health, love, supply, freedom of speech, home or friends could be it. 
All of these ideas are complete and ready to go in the divine mind, which is man's own superconscious mind. They must come through him, not to him. As an example, a man came to me and asked for help with methods that would work. Within a certain amount of time, he had to raise $50,000 for his business. The deadline was almost up when he came to me in a sad state. His business didn't have any investors, and the bank simply turned down his loan request. I answered, I guess you lost your cool at the bank, which is why your power. You can handle anything if you can handle yourself first. I added, go back to the bank and I will treat you. What I treated him with was, you are in love with the spirit of everyone connected with the bank. Let the divine idea come out of this, she said. Woman, you are talking about something that can't happen. My train won't get me there until 10 a.m. tomorrow, which is Saturday. The time limit is up tomorrow, and they won't do it anyway. It's too late, they said. God doesn't need time, and it's never too late. I told him, I don't know anything about business, but I do know everything there is to know about God. He replied, it all sounds good when I sit here listening to you, but it's terrible when I go out. He lived in a faraway city, and I didn't hear from him for a week. Then I got a letter that said, You were right, I raised the money, and I will never again doubt the truth of everything you told me. I saw him a few weeks later and asked, What happened? After all, it looked like you had plenty of time. He answered, My train was late, and I got there just 15 minutes to 12. I quietly went into the bank and told them I needed a loan, and they gave it to me right away. It was the fifteenth minute of his time, but Infinite Spirit was still on time. In this case, the man could not have shown by himself. He needed someone to help him keep his eyes on the goal. This is what two men can do for each other. Jesus Christ was telling the truth when he said, If two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, my Father in heaven will do it for them. When people are too focused on their own problems, they start to doubt and fear others. Because he is not involved in the case, the friend or healer can see clearly and never changes his mind about the success, health or wealth. It's a lot easier to show someone else than to show yourself. So, if someone feels like they are about to give up, they shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. Someone who paid close attention to life once said, no man can fail if one person sees him succeed. That's how powerful it is, and many a great man's success was due to a wife, sister, or friend who believed in him and stuck to the right plan. Third, the word's power. Part three, the power of the word. By your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. When someone knows how powerful words are, they are very careful about what they say. He only needs to see how people respond to his words to know that they don't go unanswered. Man is constantly creating law for himself through his spoken words. I always miss a car, said a man I knew. As soon as I get there, it always pulls away. His daughter said, I always catch a car. This went on for years. It'll come just as I get there. Both failed and succeeded, and each had made their own law. This is how myths work in the mind. The horseshoe or rabbit's foot doesn't have any power, but what a person says and believes will bring them luck, builds hope in their inner mind, and brings them luck. But I think this won't work when people have grown emotionally and know a greater law. There is no going back, and graven pictures must be put away, such as, two guys in my class had been having a lot of business success for a few months before everything went wrong. As we tried to figure out what was going on, I saw that they had each bought a lucky monkey instead of making their statements and praying to God for success and wealth. I told her, oh, I see. You've been putting your faith in lucky monkeys instead of God. They threw the lucky monkeys down a coal hole and called on the law of mercy, saying that people can forget about their mistakes. Things went back to normal. But this doesn't mean you should get rid of all the good horseshoes and ornaments around the house. 
Instead, you should know that the power behind them comes from God, and the object just makes you feel hopeful. I was with a friend one day who was really sad. She picked up a horseshoe as she crossed the street. She was filled with joy and hope right away. She said that God sent her the horseshoe to help her stay strong. For sure, that was the only thing that could have been on her mind at that very moment. Her hope turned into trust, and she did a great job showing it in the end. I want to make it clear that the guys I just talked about were relying only on the monkeys, while this woman saw the power in the horseshoe. I know that it took me a long time to stop believing that a certain thing would make me unhappy. If the thing happened, sadness would always follow. I found that the only way to change my mind was to say, there is not two powers, there is only one power God. There are no disappointments, and this thing means a happy surprise. Right away I noticed a difference, and happy surprises started happening to me. A friend of mine said that she would never walk under a ladder. I told them, if you are scared, you believe in two powers, good and evil, instead of one. God is the only power that can stand against him, unless people make up the fake idea of evil. Walk under the next ladder you see to show that you believe in only one power, God, and that evil has no power or reality. She then went to her bank. There was a ladder in the way of her getting to the safe deposit box where her box was kept. You could not get to the box without going under the ladder. She shook with fear and went back. She couldn't look at the cat that was in her way. But when she got to the street, my words stuck in her head, and she chose to go back and walk under it. It was a big event in her life, because ladders had been shackling her for years. Once more, she went back to the vault, but the ladder wasn't there. This takes place so often. People don't have to do things they are afraid of if they don't want to. The law of non-resistance is what most people don't understand. Someone said that bravery is both smart and magical. Don't be afraid of anything. If there isn't anything to be afraid of, it goes away on its own. The reason is that the woman's fear brought the ladder into her path, and her lack of fear took it away. So, the unseen forces are always at work for people who are actually pulling the strings even though they don't know it. Because words have vibrational power, Whatever a person says starts to bring other people to him. People who talk about getting sick all the time always end up getting it. When people know the truth, they need to be very careful about what they say. One friend of mine often tells me on the phone, please come over and we can have a nice old-fashioned chat. This old-fashioned chat is an hour of mostly negative talk about things like loss, lack, failure and sickness. I tell them, no, thank you. I've had enough old-fashioned chats. They're too expensive. But I'd love to have a new fashion chat where we talk about what we want, not what we don't want. There is an old saying that says people should only use their words to heal, bless, or prosper. What a person says about another person will be said about him too. And what he wants for another person, he wants for himself too. It's true that curses do come home to roost. Should a man wish someone bad luck, he will definitely get bad luck himself. He wants to help someone succeed, which means he wants and helps himself succeed. If you speak clearly and speak life into your body, you can heal it fully and get rid of all sickness in your mind. Metaphysician knows that all sickness has a mental cause and that to heal the body, one must first heal the mind. Our soul is our deepest mind, and we need to protect it from bad thoughts. The 23rd Psalm says, He restoreth my soul. This means that the soul, or subconscious mind, needs to be given new thoughts. The spiritual marriage is between the soul and the spirit, or the subconscious mind and the superconscious mind. They must be the same. There is one God and one person, when the subconscious is full of the perfect thoughts of the superconscious. He said, I and the Father are one. This means that he is one with the world of perfect ideas. He is the man made in God's image and form, and he has control over everything God made, 
including his mind, body, and business. It is safe to say that breaking the law of love is the cause of all sickness and poor health. In the game of life, love or kindness wins every time. This is my new commandment, love one another. As an example, a woman I know had the look of a terrible skin disease for years. The doctors told her it couldn't be cured and she felt hopeless. She was on stage and she was afraid that she would soon have to quit her job because she didn't have any other way to make money. On the other hand, she got a good job and was a big hit on the first night. The reviewers gave her nice reviews, which made her very happy and excited. The next day, she got a letter telling her she was fired. Someone in the group was angry at how well she was doing and sent her away. That night, she worked in quiet for hours because she was filled with anger and hatred toward that man. She cried out, Oh God, don't let me hate that man. I soon fell into a very deep silence, she said. I felt calm around the man, myself, and the whole world. And I did this for two more nights. The third day, I woke up and the skin disease was gone. By asking for love or kindness, she had fulfilled the law, because love is the fulfillment of the law. The disease which was caused by subconscious anger was gone. Rheumatism is caused by having critical, unbalanced thoughts over and over again. These thoughts cause abnormal blood deposits that settle in the joints. Anger, fear, unforgiveness and other emotions can lead to false growths. Every sickness comes from a mind that isn't at ease. In class, I once said, it doesn't help to ask anyone, what's wrong with you? We might as well ask, what's wrong with you? Unforgiveness is the main reason why people get sick. It will narrow airways, hurt the brain, and make it harder to see. It brings a lot of bad things with it. When I called on a woman one day, she said she was sick because she ate an oyster that was poisonous. When they asked me if the oyster was poisoned, I told them no. What's wrong with you? Oh, about 19 people, she answered. She had a fight with 19 people and was so upset that she attracted the wrong oyster. Any discord on the outside means there is discord in the mind. As the inside, so the outside. Man's only real enemies are inside himself. And a man's enemies shall be those who live in his own house. Personality is one of the last enemies to be defeated because this world is still learning how to love. Peace on earth goodwill toward men was Christ's word. A wise person then tries to improve himself by helping their friend do the same. That's his job, to send happiness and gifts to everyone. And the amazing thing is that if you bless someone, they can't hurt you. One man came to me and asked for help with business success. He was selling machinery when a competitor showed up with what he said was a better machine. My friend was afraid that he would lose. I told them, first, we need to get rid of all fear and know that God is looking out for them. The divine idea must come out of this. In other words, the right person will sell the right machine to the right person. I also told them, don't think anything bad about that person. He obeyed and went to the meeting, fearlessly praising the other man. He was also ready to not sell his machine if it wasn't the right thing to do. He said that the result was great. The other guy's machine wouldn't work, and he sold his without any trouble at all. But I tell you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who hurt you and treat you badly. When someone sends goodwill, it surrounds them in a shield of security, and no plot against them will succeed. To put it another way, Love and goodwill kill the enemies inside you, so you don't have any enemies outside you. There is peace on earth for those who wish people well. The fourth chapter is called The Law of Non-Resistance. E.V. Do not fight evil. Do not let evil win. Instead, use good to beat evil. Nothing in the world can stop someone who is completely unresistible. The Chinese believe that water is the most powerful element because it can't be broken. It can chip away a rock and move everything in its path. 
Resist not evil, Jesus Christ said, because he knew that there was no evil and therefore nothing to fight. Bad things happen because people have unrealistic ideas or think there are two forces, good and bad. An old story says that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of illusion, or Maya, and saw two gods instead of one, which was God. So, evil is a fake law that people have made up through psychoma or soul sleep. Soul sleep means that a person's mind has been hypnotized by the race concept of sin, sickness, death, etc. This is called carnal or mortal thought, and his real life has become more real than his dreams. We learned in the last chapter that a person's soul is his subconscious mind and that his faithful helper shows him how he really feels, whether it's good or bad. The way he looks and acts shows what he has been imagining. The sick man saw himself as sick, the poor man saw himself as poor, and the rich man saw himself as rich. People often ask, why does a child get sick when it's too young to understand what it means? I tell them that kids are sensitive and open to what other people think about them and that they often see what their parents are afraid of before they do. Another wise person told me, if you don't run your subconscious mind yourself, someone else will run it for you. Mothers often bring sickness and bad luck to their children without realizing it because they constantly think about them being scared and look for signs. One woman was asked by a friend if her little girl had the measles. She quickly responded, not yet. This meant that she was planning for the illness and getting ready for something she didn't want for herself and the child. The person who is grounded and set in right thinking, who only sends kindness to others, and who is fearless, however, cannot be affected by the bad thoughts of others. He could actually only get good thoughts then, since he only puts good thoughts out. It is said that resistance is hell because it makes people suffer. I once got a great tip from a metaphysician on how to win every game in life. It is the top level of not fighting back. He said, At one point in my life I baptized children, and of course they had many names. I don't baptize kids anymore. I baptize events, but I give each one the same name. If I fail, I baptize it with success in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This shows the great law of transformation, which is based on not resisting. Every loss turned into a success through what he said. In one case, a woman who needed money and knew about the spiritual law of wealth was stuck with a man who made her feel very poor all the time. She started to think about how poor he was when he talked about lack and limitation, which made her dislike him and blame him for her failure. She knew that she had to feel like she had received before she could show that she had supplied. A sense of wealth must come before it shows up. One day, she realized she was fighting the situation and seeing two forces when there was only one. She blessed the man and baptized the situation, and it worked. She told him, Since there is only one power, God, this man is here for my good and my prosperity, even though he didn't seem to be there for that. Soon after, she met a woman through this man. The woman gave her a few thousand dollars as payment for a service she had provided. The man then moved to a faraway city and disappeared from her life in a smooth manner. Say, every man is a golden link in the chain of my good, because all men are God in the flesh and are waiting for the chance to serve the divine plan for their lives. If you bless your enemy, you take away his weapons. The arrows he shoots will turn into gifts. People and countries are both subject to this law. You can't hurt a country if you bless it and send love and peace to everyone who lives there. To get the right idea of non-resistance, a person must understand spirituality. People often tell me, I don't want to be a doormat. To which I answer, when you use non-resistance with wisdom, no one will ever be able to walk over you. For example, one day I couldn't wait for an important phone call to come through. I ignored every call that came in and didn't make any myself because I was afraid it might get in the way of the one I was waiting for. 
I started to handle things myself instead of saying, divine ideas never clash, the call will come at the right time, and letting endless intelligence figure things out. I took over the fight and made it mine instead of God's. I stayed stressed and worried. The bell didn't ring for about an hour. When I looked at the phone, I saw that the receiver had been turned off for that long, so the call was dropped. I had completely lost sight of the phone because of my worry, fear, and assumption that there was interruption. As soon as I realized what I had done, I began to bless the situation. It worked, so I baptized it and said, I cannot lose any call that is divinely mine. I am by grace and not by law, he said. A friend sped to the nearest phone to tell the company to reconnect. She walked into a busy grocery store, but the owner left his customers to take the call himself. Right away, my phone connected, and two minutes later, I got a very important call. An hour later, I got the call I had been waiting for. The ships come in over a calm sea. As long as people fight against something, they will have it. It will follow him if he runs away from it. I told a woman this over and over again, and she said, how true that is. When I got home, I was unhappy because my mother was critical and bossy, so I ran away and got married, but my husband was just like my mother, so I had to deal with the same problems again. Quickly agree with your enemy. That is, agree that the bad thing is good, don't worry about it, and it will go away on its own. A great statement is, none of these things move me. The situation is out of balance because of problems inside of people. So long as he doesn't feel anything about a bad situation, it will never come up again in his life. We can see that man's work is always with himself. People have told me, give treatments to change my brother or husband. I tell them, no, I will give treatments to change you. Your husband and brother will change when you change. One of my students often lied. That way wouldn't work, and if she lied, she would be told a lie. This is what she said. I don't care. I can't get along without lying. One day, she was on the phone with a man she loved very much. She looked at me and said, I don't trust him. I know he's lying to me. I told her, well, you lie yourself, so someone has to lie to you, and you'll be sure it will be just the person you want to tell you the truth. Later, I saw her and she said, I'm cured of lying. I asked, what cured you? She answered, I lived with a woman who lied more than I did. Sometimes seeing your own flaws in other people helps you get over them. Life is like a mirror. The people we meet only show ourselves back to us. Living in the past is a way to fail and goes against spiritual law. Look, now is the right time, Jesus Christ said. You will be saved today. When Lot's wife turned around, she turned into a salt pillar. Time is stolen by the past and the future. People should bless the past and forget about it if it holds them back. They should also bless the future because they know it holds endless happiness for them, but they should live in the present moment. One woman told me she couldn't buy Christmas presents because she didn't have any money. She said, last year was so different. I had a lot of money and could give nice gifts, but this year I don't have much. I told her, you will never show money as long as you are weak and stuck in the past. Enjoy the present moment and get ready to give gifts for Christmas. She yelled, I know what to do. Dig your ditches and the money will come. I told her, go buy some tinsel twine, Christmas seals and wrapping paper. The presents will come and stick themselves to the Christmas seals. This also showed her faith in God and lack of fear about money because her mind told her, keep every penny you have because you don't know when you'll get any more. She bought the seals, paper and twine and a few days before Christmas, she got a gift of several hundred dollars. The mind was filled with hope after buying the seals and twine, which made it possible for the money to show up. She had plenty of time to buy all the gifts. Man must stay in the present moment. In light of this, look well today. 
That's how the dawn greets you. He needs to be emotionally alert, always looking for his leads and making the most of every chance. One day, I kept saying to Infinite Spirit in my head, don't let me miss a trick. That evening, I learned something very important. It is very important to start the day with good words. As soon as you wake up, say a statement, such as, your will be done today. It's a beautiful day, and I'm thankful for it. Miracles will follow miracles, and wonders will never end. If you do this every day, you'll see miracles and wonders happen in your life. I opened a book one morning and read, Be amazed by what you see. There it was, my message for the day. I kept saying, Look with wonder at what is before you. Around noon, I got a big sum of money that I had been wanting for a certain reason. In the next part, I'll talk about the mantras that have helped me the most. But you shouldn't use an affirmation unless it completely and utterly makes sense to you. Also, affirmations are often changed to fit the needs of different individuals. One phrase that has helped many people get ahead is, I have a wonderful job, I do a wonderful job, I provide a wonderful service for a wonderful pay. Someone in my class took the first two lines and added the last two. It sent a very strong message because there should always be perfect payment for perfect service and rhymes are easy to remember. So she sang it out loud and soon got great work done in great style. She also got great pay for great work. A business student from another class took it and changed the word work to business. He said it again and again. I have a wonderful business in a wonderful way and I provide a wonderful service for a wonderful pay. That afternoon, he made a $41,000 deal, even though he hadn't done anything with his business in months. Each statement needs to be carefully crafted and cover all the bases. As an example, I knew a woman who was really needy and asked to be hired. A lot of work was given to her, but she was never paid. She now knows to add, great work for great pay. It is man's natural right to have plenty, not enough at all. His barns should be full and his cup should overflow. This is what God wants for people and the golden age will come to them when they break down the walls of lack in their own minds. All of their good desires will be granted. The law of karma and the law of forgiveness. Man only gets back what he gives. Chapter 5 the law of karma and the law of forgiveness. Life is like a game of boomerangs. It is amazing how accurate it is that man's thoughts, actions and words always come back to him. This is the law of karma, which comes from the Sanskrit word for return. What a person plants, he will also harvest. As an example, a friend told me this story about herself to show how the law works. Her aunt was the source of all her bad luck. Everything she said to her, someone said to her. At home, I get cranky a lot. One time, while my aunt was talking to me at dinner, I told her, stop talking, I want to eat alone. The next day, I had lunch with a woman I wanted to impress. When she said, stop talking, I want to eat in peace, I was talking very fast. My friend is very aware, so her karma comes back to her much faster than it would to someone on the mental plane. When it comes to spiritual law, the more someone knows, the more they are responsible for, and when they don't follow it, they suffer a lot. Fear of the Lord, or law, is the first step toward being wise. Reading the word Lord, law, will help us understand a lot of parts of the Bible better. Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, the Lord said in the law. God doesn't get angry, the law does. God thinks that man is perfect because he made him in his own image and gave him power and authority. This is the perfect idea of man that is stored in God's thoughts and ready for man to recognize it. This is because man can only be and achieve what he sees himself doing. An old proverb says, Nothing ever happens without someone watching. From the scenes in his own mind, man sees his failures or successes, his happiness or sadness, 
before they become real. We've seen this happen when a mother imagines her child getting sick or when a woman imagines her husband succeeding. Jesus Christ said, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This means that knowing spiritual law sets you free from all bad situations. Authority comes after obedience, and when people obey the law, the law obeys them. People must follow the law of power before it can serve them. When people don't know how to handle it, it turns into a dangerous enemy. That's it for the mind rules. One woman with a strong will sometimes wished she owned a house that belonged to a friend, and she often imagined herself living in that house. The man died over time, and she moved into the house. After a few years, when she learned about spiritual law, she asked me, Do you think I had anything to do with that man's death? Yes, your desire was so strong that everything came together to make it happen, I answered. But you paid your karmic debt. After your deeply loved husband died, the house sat empty for years, known as a white elephant. But the original owner and her husband would not have been affected by her thoughts if they were sure of the truth. They were both bound by karma law. When the woman really wanted the house, she should have said, Infinite intelligence, give me the right house, the house that is mine by divine right and is just as charming as this one. The divine choice would have made her happy and made everything better for everyone. God's plan is the only one that is safe to use. Desire is a powerful force that needs to be channeled in the right way to avoid chaos. If you want to show something, the first step is to ask for a right. People should only ask for what is rightfully theirs by God. Going back to the example, if the woman had said, if this house I want is mine, I can't lose it. If it's not, give me its equivalent. The man might have chosen to move out, which would have been a good thing if it was God's will for her, or another house would have been given to her instead. Anything that you force to happen through your own will always fails and doesn't work out well. My will be done, not thine, says the Bible. It's interesting that when people give up their own will, Endless intelligence can work through them and get what they want. Law says, stand still and see how the Lord saves you. One woman who came to me in a lot of pain is one case. The mother was very scared because her daughter had decided to go on a very dangerous trip. She said she had tried every argument, warned her about the risks and told her not to go, but her daughter kept getting more and more stubborn and determined. I told the mother, you are forcing your will on your daughter, which you have no right to do, and your fear of the trip is only drawing it to you, because people attract what they fear. I also told her, let go, take your mental hands off, and put it in God's hands. I suggested that she say, I put this situation in the hands of infinite love and wisdom. If this trip is the divine plan, I bless it, and no longer resist. If it is not divinely planned, I give thanks that it is not. A day or two later, her daughter told her, Mother, I'm not going on the trip anymore, and things went back to how they were before. Man seems to have a hard time learning how to stand still. When I talk about non-resistance, I'll talk about this law in more depth. I have another story about planting and reaping that came to me in the strangest way. A woman came up to me and said that the bank had given her a fake $20 bill. She was upset because she said, the bank employees will never admit their mistake. I told her, let's look at the situation and figure out why you brought it on yourself. After a moment of thought, she said, I know it. I sent a friend a lot of stage money for a joke. That's right. The law sent her some stage money because it doesn't understand jokes. I told them, Let's use the law of forgiveness to even things out. The law of forgiveness is at the heart of Christianity. Christ saved us from the evil of the karma law, and the Christ that lives inside each person is their own redeemer and rescue from all things that aren't right. I told Infinite Spirit, we call on the law of forgiveness and give thanks that she is under grace and not under law and cannot lose this $20 
which is hers by divine right. Then I told her, Go back to the bank and tell them without fear that it was given to you there by mistake. To her surprise, they said sorry and gave her another bill, being very nice to her. Now that people know the law, they can fix their mistakes. Man can't change the outside world into something he isn't. If he wants to be rich, he has to be rich in his mind first. For instance, a woman came to me and asked for help with getting rich. There was a lot of chaos in her house because she wasn't very interested in running it. She asked me, if you want to be rich, you must be neat. Order is heaven's first law and all rich men are neat. I told her, you will never get rich with a burned match in the pin cushion. She laughed it off and started straight away to clean up her house. She moved furniture around, cleaned rugs and organized desk drawers. Soon, she made a big financial show, a gift from a family member. The woman herself got better, and she stays financially pumped up by always keeping an eye on the outside world and hoping for good things to happen, knowing that God will provide for her. A lot of people don't know that gifts and things are investments and that saving and storing always end in loss. There is that scatters and yet grows, and there is that holds back more than is necessary, but leads to poverty. One man I knew wanted to buy a jacket lined with fur. He and his wife went to several stores, but none of them had what he was looking for. He said they all looked too cheap. Finally, he saw one. The seller told him it was worth $1,000, but because it was late in the season, the manager would sell it to him for $500. His money and other valuables were worth about $700. His logical mind would have told him, you can't spend almost all of your money on a coat. But he was very intuitive and never thought things through. If I get this coat, I'll make a lot of money, he told his wife. So his wife reluctantly agreed. After about a month, he got a $10,000 fee. The coat made him feel so rich, it made him think of wealth and success. The contract would not have been given to him without the coat. It was a smart bet that paid off big. If people don't listen to these signs to spend or give, the same amount of money will be wasted on things that aren't fun or make people happy. One woman told me that she told her family on Thanksgiving Day that they could not afford a Thanksgiving dinner. She had the money, but chose to save it. A few days later, someone entered her room and took from the desk box the exact amount the dinner would have cost. The law always stands back of the man who spends freely, with knowledge. For example, one of my students was shopping with her little nephew. The child clamoured for a toy, which she told him she could not afford to buy. She realised suddenly that she was seeking lack and not recognising God as her source. So... She bought the toy and on her way home picked up in the street the exact amount of money she had paid for it. Man's supply is inexhaustible and unfailing when fully trusted, but faith or trust must precede the demonstration. According to your faith, be it unto you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for faith holds the vision steady and the adverse pictures are dissolved and dissipated, and in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Jesus Christ brought the good news, the message that there was a higher law than the law of karma, and that that law transcends the law of karma. It is the law of kindness or forgiveness. It is the law which frees man from the law of cause and effect, the law of consequence, under grace and not under law. We are told that on this plane, man reaps where he has not sown. The gifts of God are simply poured out upon him. All that the kingdom affords is his. This continued state of bliss awaits the man who has overcome the race or world thought. In the world thought there is tribulation, but Jesus Christ said, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The world thought is that of sin, sickness and death. He saw their absolute unreality and said sickness and sorrow shall pass away and death itself, the last enemy, be overcome. We know now from a scientific standpoint 
that death could be overcome by stamping the subconscious mind with the conviction of eternal youth and eternal life. The subconscious, being simply power without direction, carries out orders without questioning. Working under the direction of the superconscious, the Christ or God within man, the resurrection of the body would be accomplished. Man would no longer throw off his body in death, it would be transformed into the body electric, sung by Walt Whitman, for Christianity is founded upon the forgiveness of sins and an empty tomb. Chapter 6. Casting the Burden. Impressing the Subconscious. When man knows his own powers and the workings of his mind, his great desire is to find an easy and quick way to impress the subconscious with good, for simply an intellectual knowledge of the truth will not bring results. In my own case, I found the easiest way is in casting the burden. A metaphysician once explained it in this manner. He said, The only thing which gives anything weight in nature is the law of gravitation, and if a boulder could be taken high above the planet, there would be no weight in that boulder. And that is what Jesus Christ meant when he said, My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He had overcome the world vibration and functioned in the fourth dimensional realm where there is only perfection, completion, life and joy. He said, Come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We are also told in the 55th Psalm to cast thy burden upon the Lord. Many passages in the Bible state that the battle is God's, not man's, and that man is always to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. This indicates that the superconscious mind, or Christ within, is the department which fights man's battle and relieves him of burdens. We see, therefore, that man violates law if he carries a burden, and a burden is an adverse thought or condition, and this thought or condition has its root in the subconscious. It seems almost impossible to make any headway directing the subconscious from the conscious or reasoning mind, as the reasoning mind, the intellect, is limited in its conceptions and filled with doubts and fears. How scientific it then is to cast the burden upon the superconscious mind or Christ within where it is made light or dissolved into its native nothingness. For example, a woman in urgent need of money made light upon the Christ within, the superconscious, with the statement, I cast this burden of lack on the Christ within, and I go free to have plenty. The belief in lack was her burden, and as she cast it upon the superconscious with its belief of plenty, an avalanche of supply was the result. We read, The Christ in you, the hope of glory. Another example, one of my students had been given a new piano and there was no room in her studio for it until she had moved out the old one. She was in a state of perplexity. She wanted to keep the old piano but knew of no place to send it. She became desperate as the new piano was to be sent immediately, in fact was on its way with no place to put it. She said it came to her to repeat, I cast this burden on the Christ within and I go free. A few moments later, her phone rang, and a woman friend asked if she might rent her old piano, and it was moved out a few minutes before the new one arrived. I knew a woman whose burden was resentment. She said, I cast this burden of resentment on the Christ within, and I go free, to be loving, harmonious, and happy. The almighty superconscious flooded the subconscious with love, and her whole life was changed. For years, resentment had held her in a state of torment and imprisoned her soul, the subconscious mind. The statement should be made over and over and over, sometimes for hours at a time, silently or audibly, with quietness but determination. I have often compared it to winding up a Victrola. We must wind ourselves up with spoken words. I have noticed in casting the burden, after a little while, one seems to see clearly. It is impossible to have clear vision while in the throes of the carnal mind. Doubts and fear poison the mind and body, 
and imagination runs riot, attracting disaster and disease. In steadily repeating the affirmation, I cast this burden on the Christ within and go free. The vision clears, and with it a feeling of relief, and sooner or later comes the manifestation of good, be it health, happiness, or supply. One of my students once asked me to explain the darkness before the dawn. I referred in a preceding chapter to the fact that often, before the big demonstration, everything seems to go wrong and deep depression clouds the consciousness. It means that out of the subconscious are rising the doubts and fears of the ages. These old derelicts of the subconscious rise to the surface to be put out. It is then that man should clap his cymbals, like Jehoshaphat, and give thanks that he is saved, even though he seems surrounded by the enemy, the situation of lack or disease. The student continued, How long must one remain in the dark? And I replied, Until one can see in the dark, and casting the burden enables one to see in the dark. In order to impress the subconscious, active faith is always essential, Faith without works is dead. In these chapters, I have endeavored to bring out this point. Jesus Christ showed active faith when he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground before he gave thanks for the loaves and the fishes. I will give another example showing how necessary this step is. In fact, active faith is the bridge over which man passes to his promised land. Through misunderstanding, a woman had been separated from her husband, whom she loved deeply. He refused all offers of reconciliation and would not communicate with her in any way. Coming into the knowledge of spiritual law, she denied the appearance of separation. She made this statement, There is no separation in divine mind, therefore I cannot be separated from the love and companionship which are mine by divine right. She showed active faith by arranging a place for him at the table every day, thereby impressing the subconscious with a picture of his return. Over a year passed, but she never wavered, and one day he walked in. The subconscious is often impressed through music. Music has a fourth-dimensional quality and releases the soul from imprisonment. It makes wonderful things seem possible and easy of accomplishment. I have a friend who uses her Victrola daily for this purpose. It puts her in perfect harmony and releases the imagination. Another woman often dances while making her affirmations. The rhythm and harmony of music and motion carry her words forth with tremendous power. The student must remember also not to despise the day of small things. Invariably, before a demonstration come signs of land. Before Columbus reached America, he saw birds and twigs which showed him land was near. So it is with a demonstration, but often the student mistakes it for the demonstration itself and is disappointed. For example, a woman had spoken the word for a set of dishes. Not long afterward, a friend gave her a dish which was old and cracked. She came to me and said, Well, I asked for a set of dishes, and all I got was a cracked plate. I replied, the plate was only signs of land. It shows your dishes are coming. Look upon it as birds and seaweed. And not long afterward the dishes came. Continually making believe impresses the subconscious. If one makes believe he is rich and makes believe he is successful, in due time he will reap. Children are always making believe, and except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. For example, I know of a woman who was very poor, but no one could make her feel poor. She earned a small amount of money from rich friends, who constantly reminded her of her poverty and to be careful and saving. Regardless of their admonitions, she would spend all her earnings on a hat or make someone a gift and be in a rapturous state of mind. Her thoughts were always centered on beautiful clothes and rings and things, but without envying others. She lived in the world of the wondrous and only riches seemed real to her. Before long she married a rich man, and the rings and things became visible. I do not know whether the man was the divine selection, 
but opulence had to manifest in her life, as she had imaged only opulence. There is no peace or happiness for man until he has erased all fear from the subconscious. Fear is misdirected energy and must be redirected or transmuted into faith. Jesus Christ said, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? All things are possible to him that believeth. I am asked, so often by my students, How can I get rid of fear? I reply, By walking up to the thing you are afraid of. The lion takes its fierceness from your fear. Walk up to the lion and he will disappear, run away, and he runs after you. I have shown in previous chapters how the lion of lack disappeared when the individual spent money fearlessly, showing faith that God was his supply and therefore unfailing. Many of my students have come out of the bondage of poverty and are now bountifully supplied through losing all fear of letting money go out. The subconscious is impressed with the truth that God is the giver and the gift. Therefore, as one is one with the giver, he is one with the gift. A splendid statement is, I now thank God the giver for God the gift. Man has so long separated himself from his good and his supply through thoughts of separation and lack, that sometimes it takes dynamite to dislodge these false ideas from the subconscious and the dynamite is a big situation. We see in the foregoing illustration how the individual was freed from his bondage by showing fearlessness. Man should watch himself hourly to detect if his motive for action is fear or faith. Choose ye this day whom we shall serve, fear or faith. Perhaps one's fear is of personality. Then do not avoid the people feared. Be willing to meet them cheerfully and they will either prove golden links in the chain of one's good or disappear harmoniously from one's pathway. Perhaps one's fear is of disease or germs. Then one should be fearless and undisturbed in a germ-laden situation and he would be immune. One can only contract germs while vibrating at the same rate as the germ and fear drags men down to the level of the germ. Of course, the disease-laden germ is the product of carnal mind, as all thought must objectify. Germs do not exist in the superconscious or divine mind, therefore are the product of man's vine imagination. In the twinkling of an eye, man's release will come when he realizes there is no power in evil. The material world will fade away, and the fourth-dimensional world, the world of the wondrous, will swing into manifestation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Losing her resentment, he was a captain, and she always called him the Cap. One day she said suddenly, God bless the Cap wherever he is. I replied, Now that is real love, and when you have become a complete circle and are no longer disturbed by the situation, you will have his love or attract its equivalent. I was moving at this time and did not have a telephone, so was out of touch with her for a few weeks, when one morning I received a letter saying, We are married. At the earliest opportunity, I paid her a call. My first words were, What happened? Oh, she exclaimed, a miracle! One day I woke up and all suffering had ceased. I saw him that evening and he asked me to marry him. We were married in about a week and I have never seen a more devoted man. There is an old saying, no man is your enemy, no man is your friend, every man is your teacher. So one should become impersonal and learn what each man has to teach him and soon he would learn his lessons and be free. The woman's lover was teaching her selfless love, which every man, sooner or later, must learn. Suffering is not necessary for man's development. It is the result of violation of spiritual law, but few people seem able to rouse themselves from their soul sleep without it. When people are happy, they usually become selfish, and automatically the law of karma is set in action. Man often suffers loss through lack of appreciation, I knew a woman who had a very nice husband, but she said often, 
I don't care anything about being married, but that is nothing against my husband. I'm simply not interested in married life. She had other interests and scarcely remembered she had a husband. She only thought of him when she saw him. One day her husband told her he was in love with another woman and left. She came to me in distress and resentment. I replied, it is exactly what you spoke the word for. You said you didn't care anything about being married, so the subconscious worked to get you unmarried. She said, oh yes, I see. People get what they want and then feel very much hurt. She soon became in perfect harmony with the situation and knew they were both much happier apart. When a woman becomes indifferent or critical and ceases to be an inspiration to her husband, he misses the stimulus of their early relationship and is restless and unhappy. A man came to me dejected, miserable and poor. His wife was interested in the science of numbers and had had him read. It seems the report was not very favorable, for he said, My wife says I'll never amount to anything because I am a two. I replied, I don't care what your number is, you are a perfect idea in divine mind, and we will demand the success and prosperity which are already planned for you by that infinite intelligence. Within a few weeks, he had a very fine position, and a year or two later, he achieved a brilliant success as a writer. No man is a success in business unless he loves his work. The picture the artist paints for love of his art is his greatest work. The potboiler is always something to live down. No man can attract money if he despises it. Many people are kept in poverty by saying, money means nothing to me and I have a contempt for people who have it. This is the reason so many artists are poor. Their contempt for money separates them from it. I remember hearing one artist say of another, he's no good as an artist, he has money in the bank. This attitude of mind, of course, separates man from his supply. He must be in harmony with a thing in order to attract it. Money is God in manifestation as freedom from want and limitation, but it must be always kept in circulation and put to right uses. Hoarding and saving react with grim vengeance. This does not mean that man should not have houses and lots, stocks and bonds, for the barns of the righteous man shall be full. It means man should not hoard even the principal, if an occasion arises when money is necessary. In letting it go out fearlessly and cheerfully, he opens the way for more to come in, for God is man's unfailing and inexhaustible supply. This is the spiritual attitude towards money, and the great bank of the universal never fails. We see an example of hoarding in the film production of Greed, the woman won $5,000 in a lottery, but would not spend it. She hoarded and saved, let her husband suffer and starve, and eventually she scrubbed floors for a living. She loved the money itself and put it above everything, and one night she was murdered and the money taken from her. This is an example of where love of money is the root of all evil. Money in itself is good and beneficial, but used for destructive purposes, hoarded and saved, or considered more important than love, brings disease and disaster and the loss of the money itself. Follow the path of love and all things are added, for God is love and God is supply. Follow the path of selfishness and greed and the supply vanishes or man is separated from it. For example, I knew the case of a very rich woman who hoarded her income. She rarely gave anything away, but bought and bought and bought things for herself. She was very fond of necklaces, and a friend once asked her how many she possessed. She replied, 67. She bought them and put them away, carefully wrapped in tissue paper. Had she used the necklaces, it would have been quite legitimate, but she was violating the law of use. Her closets were filled with clothes she never wore and jewels which never saw the light. The woman's arms were gradually becoming paralyzed from holding on to things, and eventually she was considered incapable of looking after her affairs, and her wealth was handed over to others to manage. So man, in ignorance of the law, brings about his own destruction. All disease, 
all unhappiness come from the violation of the law of love. Man's boomerangs of hate, resentment and criticism come back laden with sickness and sorrow. Love seems almost a lost art, but the man with the knowledge of spiritual law knows it must be regained, for without it he has become as sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. For example, I had a student who came to me month after month to clean her awareness of anger. After a while she arrived at the point where she resented only one woman, but that one woman kept her busy. Little by little she became balanced and peaceful, and one day all anger was wiped out. She came in glowing and declared, You can't understand how I feel. The woman said something to me, and instead of being angry, I was loving and kind, and she apologized, and was perfectly lovely to me. No one can understand the wonderful lightness I feel within. Love and kindness are priceless in business. For example, a woman came to me grumbling of her boss. She said she was cold and critical, and knew she did not want her in the job. Well, I replied, salute the divinity in the woman and send her love. She said, I can't. She's a marble woman. I answered, You remember the story of the artist who asked for a certain piece of marble. He was asked why he wanted it, and he replied, Because there is an angel in the marble, and out of it he produced a wonderful work of art. She said, Very well, I'll try it. A week later she came back and said, I did what you told me to, and now the woman is very kind, and took me out in her car. People are sometimes filled with remorse for having done someone an unkindness, perhaps years ago. If the wrong cannot be righted, its effect can be minimized by doing someone a good in the present. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Sorrow, regret and sorrow tear down the cells of the body and poison the atmosphere of the individual. A woman said to me in deep sadness, Treat me to be happy and joyous, for my sorrow makes me so angry with the members of my family that I keep making more karma. I was asked to treat a woman who was crying for her daughter. 7. Love I rejected all belief in loss and separation and declared that God was the woman's joy, love and peace. The woman got her poise at once, but sent word by her son not to treat any longer because she was so happy it wasn't acceptable. That's why the human mind loves to hold on to its sorrows and regrets. A woman I knew always had something to brag about because she liked to talk about how hard things were for her. People used to think that a mom wasn't good if she didn't care about her kids. At this point, we know that mother fear is the cause of many of the illnesses and accidents that kids have. People who are afraid see clearly the illness or situation they are afraid of, and these images make the fear objectified if they are not negated. If a mother can honestly say that she gives her child to God and knows that God will protect him, then she is a happy mother. In this way, she gives him a strong shield of security. One woman woke up in the middle of the night thinking her brother was in great danger. Man is a perfect idea in God's mind and is always in the right place. Because of this, she started saying true things like, my brother is in the right place and is divinely protected. The next day, she found out that her brother had been close to an explosion in a mine but had miraculously escaped. In this way, man thinks of his brother and should know that the thing he loves lives in the secret place of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty. Nothing bad will happen to you and no plague will come near your home. True love drives out fear. Fear makes people less perfect in love and love is what the law is all about. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. This is the eighth chapter, intuition or guidance. Nothing is too hard for a man who knows the power of his words and goes with his gut. By saying the word, he calls on forces that can't be seen and can fix his body 
or change his life. Because of this, picking the right words is very important, and the student carefully picks the encouragement he wants to launch into the unseen. He knows that his supply is God, that there is a supply for every need, and that the word he speaks opens this supply. You will get what you ask for. Man needs to act first. Get close to God, and he'll get close to you. A lot of people have asked me how to make an example. When you say the word, I tell you not to do anything until you get a clear lead. Ask for the lead by saying, Infinite Spirit, show me the way and let me know if there is anything I need to do. The answer will come through a gut feeling, a random comment from someone, a passage in a book, etc. The answers are sometimes so accurate that it's shocking. In this case, a woman wanted a lot of money. She prayed, Infinite Spirit, open the way for my immediate supply. Let all that is mine by divine right now reach me in great avalanches of abundance. Then she added, Give me a clear lead. Let me know if there is anything I can do. Suddenly, the thought came to her. Give a certain friend who had helped her spiritually a hundred dollars. She told her friend, but the friend told her to wait and get another lead before giving it. So she did. It was a great gift because soon after, a lot of money came to her in a very strange way. Giving makes it possible to receive. If you want to get money moving, you should give. It is traditional for Jews to give 10% of their pay as tithe. This is thought to bring good luck. There are many very wealthy men in this country who have been tithers, and I have never seen it fail as an investment. The tenth part goes out and comes back blessed and more numerous. But the gift or tithe must be given with love and joy, because God loves a giver who is happy. People should pay their bills with joy, and all money should be sent out without fear and with a gift. With this frame of mind, man is in charge of his money. It is his to follow, and when he speaks, huge amounts of money appear. Man himself limits his supply because he can't see very well. The student sometimes has a great idea of how to make money, but is afraid to act on it. What you see and what you do must go together, like the man who bought the fur-lined coat. A woman came up to me and asked me to say the word for a job. So I asked, Infinite Spirit, make way for this woman's right position. Don't just ask for a position. Ask for the right position, the place that God already planned, because that's the only one that will make you happy. After that, I told her I was grateful for what she had received and hoped it would come true soon. Not long after, she was offered three jobs. She couldn't decide between the three in New York, Palm Beach, and Los Angeles. Ask for a clear lead. The time was almost up and she still hadn't chosen when she called one day and said, when I woke up this morning, I could smell Palm Beach. She had been there before and knew the scent of the beach. I told her, well, if you can smell Palm Beach from here, it's definitely your lead. She agreed, and the job worked out great. Leads often come to people when they least expect them to. As I walked down the street one day, I had a strong urge to go to a bakery that was a block or two away. The logical part of my mind said, there is nothing there that you want. But I had learned not to reason, so I went to the bakery and looked at everything. There was nothing there that I wanted, but as I was leaving, I saw a woman I had thought of many times and who needed my help very much. People often look for one thing and find something else. Intuition is a spiritual ability that only shows you the way. It doesn't explain anything. During a treatment, a person often gets a tip. The thought that comes to you might not seem important, but some of God's leadings are mysterious. When I was teaching, I thought that everyone would get a clear lead one day. After treatment, a woman came up to me and said, while you were treating, I got the hunch to get my furniture out of storage and get an apartment. The woman had come to get treatment for her health. I told her that I was sure getting her own home would make her health better, and added, 
I think your problem, which is congestion, has come from having things stored away. Things that are backed up cause the body to be backed up. You broke the law of use, and now your body is paying the price. I was thankful that divine order was restored in her mind, body, and affairs. A lot of people don't think about how their actions affect their bodies. There is a mental link between each illness. Realizing that his body is a perfect thought in God's mind and is therefore whole and perfect could heal him right away. But if he keeps thinking negatively, collecting, hating, fearing, and judging, the disease will come back. Even though Jesus knew that all sickness was caused by sin, he told the leper that he should stop sinning so that something worse wouldn't happen to him. So, to heal permanently, man's soul or subconscious mind needs to be washed whiter than snow, and the metaphysician is always digging deep to find the link. Do not judge, lest you also be judged, Jesus Christ said. Do not judge, lest you be judged. Many people have gotten sick and unhappy by criticizing others. What a person dislikes in other people, he brings to himself. As an example, a friend came to me upset and angry because her husband had left her for another woman. She kept putting down the other woman and saying, she knew he was married and had no right to accept his attentions. I told her, stop putting down the woman, bless her, and get over it. If you don't, you'll attract the same thing to yourself. She didn't listen, and a year or two later she became deeply interested in a married man herself. When man attacks or accuses, he picks up a live wire and may get shocked. Indecision is a problem that gets in the way of many paths. Say to yourself over and over, I am always under direct inspiration, I make the right decisions quickly. These words will stick in your mind, and soon you'll be awake and aware, making the right choices without any doubt. It has been bad for me to look to the mental plane for help, because it is where many minds meet, not just one. When people let emotion into their minds, they open themselves up to harmful forces. The mental plane is on the plane of opposites and is made up of human thought. Words of good or bad news could come to him. A person stays on the mental or human level when they study numbers and read horoscopes because they only deal with the karma road. Based on his horoscope, the man I know should have died years ago, but he is still living and leading one of the biggest efforts in this country to make the world a better place. To stop a bad prediction, you need to have a very strong thought. The student should say, every false prophecy will come to nothing, and every plan that my Father in heaven has not planned will be dissolved and dissipated. The divine idea now comes to pass. But if anyone ever tells you that happiness or wealth is coming, hold on to that message and expect it to come true, because it will eventually do so through the law of expectation. People should back up the will of everyone else. I want God's will to be carried out. God wants to give every person everything good they want, and people should use their will to keep their eyes on the perfect goal. The lost son said, I will get up and go to my father. Leaving the husks and swine of mortal thought is often an effort of the will. Most people find it easier to be afraid than to have faith, which means that faith takes work. As a person grows mentally, he realizes that any discord in the outside world is a reflection of discord in his mind. He might be aware that he is tripping or falling if he stumbles or falls. A student was walking down the street one day and was critical of someone in her mind. She was thinking to herself, that woman is the most annoying woman in the world, when all of a sudden three Boy Scouts rushed around the corner and almost knocked her over. She didn't say anything bad about the Boy Scouts. Instead, she quickly invoked the law of forgiveness and praised the woman's faith. Wisdom's roads are all nice and they all lead to peace. Once someone has asked the general what they want, they need to be ready for shocks. It may look like everything is going wrong, but it's actually going right. One woman was told that since there was no loss in the holy mind, she could not lose anything that belonged to her. Anything she lost would be given back to her, 
or replaced with something of equal value. Her last loss was $2,000 a few years ago. She loaned the money to a family member while she was still alive, but the family member died and didn't leave a will that mentioned it. The woman was angry and bitter, and since she didn't have a written record of the exchange, she never got the money. She decided to say she didn't lose it and get the 2000 from the Universal Bank. To start, she had to forgive the woman, because anger and not forgiving shut down this great bank. It was something, she said, I deny loss, there is no loss in divine mind. Therefore, I cannot lose the $2,000 that is divinely mine. One door closes and another one opens. She was living in an apartment building that was for sale. There was a clause in the lease that said the renters would have to leave within 90 days if the building sold. The owner broke the leases all of a sudden and raised the rent. Once more, unfairness was in her way, but this time no one bothered her. Because God is her source of wealth, she blessed the owner and said, The rent has gone up, but that just means I'll be even richer. New leases were made for the extra rent, but for some reason the 90-day rule was forgotten. Soon after that, the owner had a chance to sell the house. Because of the mistake in the new leases, the renters were able to keep the room for another year. There was an offer of $2,000 for each renter to leave. Several families moved, but the woman's family stayed. After about two months, the agency showed up again. This time, he asked the woman, Will you pay $2,500 to break your lease? She remembered telling her friends in the house, We will all act together if anything more is said about leaving. That's why she decided to talk to her friends first. Well, if they offered $1,500, they will definitely give $2,000 these friends said. She got a check for $2,000 for giving up the apartment. It was a very interesting way for the law to work, and what seemed like unfairness was just a way for her to make her point. This showed that there is no loss, and that when a person takes a spiritual stand, he gets everything that is his from this huge source of good. I will give you back the years that the locusts ate. As people think, the locusts are their doubts, fears, anger, and regrets. These bad thoughts are the only things that take from a person. No one gives to themselves or takes from themselves but themselves. Man is here to show that God exists and to tell the truth. The only way he can show that God exists is by making plenty out of lack and justice out of wrong. This is your proof, the Lord of Hosts said, if I'm not going to open the windows of heaven and pour out so much goodness that there is no room for it. Nigh, the divine plan or perfect self-expression. Chapter nine is called perfect self-expression or the divine design. The wind can't blow my bark off track and fate can't change its course. For every man, there is right self-expression. He is meant to fill a role that no one else can and he is meant to do something that no one else can do. It is his fate. This accomplishment is kept, a perfect thought in God's mind, waiting for people to recognize it. Man needs to be able to see the idea before it can come true, because the image faculty is the creative faculty. So, what people really want is for God to plan their lives perfectly. He might not even have a vague idea of what it is, because he might be hiding a great ability deep inside him. He should have asked, Infinite Spirit, make it possible for the divine plan of my life to come true. Let the genius within me now be released, and let me see clearly the perfect plan. The perfect plan includes health, wealth, love, and being able to express yourself perfectly. This is the square of life and it makes you happy. People who make this claim may find that big changes happen in their lives because most people have strayed far from God's plan. In the case of one woman, I know it felt like a tornado hit her life, but things got back to normal quickly and new and wonderful situations took their place. Perfect self-expression will never be work. It will be so interesting that it will be more like play. 
The student also knows that because God paid for man to be born, everything he needs to express himself perfectly will be available. A lot of geniuses have fought for years with the problem of supply, even though their words and faith could have quickly brought in the money they needed. An example is a man who came up to me after class and gave me a cent. I only have seven cents to give you, but I'm going to give you one because I believe in the power of your words. You are to say the word so that I can be fully myself and be successful. I did, and I didn't see him again for a year. He came in one day with a roll of yellow bills in his pocket. He was rich and happy. In the instant after you said the word, I was offered a job in a faraway city and am now showing health, happiness and supply. A woman may find her perfect self-expression in becoming a perfect wife, mother or homemaker rather than in having a perfect career. If you ask for clear answers, the way will become easy and successful. You shouldn't try to picture something or imagine it. It is when he asks for the holy plan to come into his thoughts that he will get motivation and start to see himself doing something great. He must not change his mind about this picture or thought. What a person seeks is actually wanting them. For example, the phone was looking for Bell. Parents should never make their kids go into certain jobs or careers. If someone knew spiritual truth, they could speak for the divine plan when they were young or even before they were born. Let the God in this child have perfect expression. Let the divine design of his mind, body and affairs be made manifest throughout his life, throughout eternity. This is the command that runs through all the scriptures, and the Bible is a book about the science of the mind. What is God's will and what is man's will? It's a book that tells people how to free their souls or inner minds from chains. The fights that are talked about are pictures of people fighting against their dying thoughts. Anyone in a man's family will be his enemy. Everyone is like Jehoshaphat and everyone is like David who kills Goliath. Faith is the little white stone that mortals use to think. So, man needs to be careful that he is not the lazy and evil worker who hid his gift. There is a bad price to pay for not using your skills. A lot of the time, fear gets in the way of people being themselves fully. Great minds have had trouble because of stage fright. The spoken word or medicine may help with this. The person then loses all sense of self-consciousness and just knows that he is a way for endless intelligence to communicate. He is directly inspired and he is brave and sure of himself because he believes that the father inside him is doing the work. A little boy and his mother often came to my clash. He asked me to say the word for him because he had tests coming up at school. As he spoke, I told him, I am one with infinite intelligence. I know everything I need to know about this subject. He knew a lot about history, but wasn't sure about his math. I saw him again afterward, and he said, I worked hard on my math and got the best grade possible, but I thought I could do well on my own in history and got a very bad grade. Man often fails when he is too sure of himself, which means he trusts his personality instead of the father within. This was shown to me by another one of my students. She went on a long trip abroad one summer and visited many places where the languages were not her first language. She was praying for help and safety all the time, and amazingly, everything went well for her. No matter what, her bag was never late or lost. She always had a place to stay at the best hotels, and no matter where she went, the service was perfect. She went back to New York. Since she knew the language, she didn't think God was necessary and took care of her business as usual. Everything went wrong and her bags were late because of the chaos and discord. The student needs to make it a habit to be in God's presence all the time. You should honor him in all of your ways. Nothing is too small or too big. An unimportant event can sometimes be the turning point in a man's life. Robert Fulton saw a ship while he was watching water boil in a tea kettle. 
There were times when I saw a student hold back his protest by resisting or showing the way. He only puts his faith in one channel and tells the manifestation exactly how he wants it to happen, which stops everything. An infinitely smart person would say, my way, not your way. Power, like steam or electricity, needs an engine or instrument that doesn't stand in the way. People are that engine or instrument. Man is told over and over to do nothing. Don't be afraid, Judah. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. You will not have to fight this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. This is shown by the woman who got $2,000 from her landlord when she stopped fighting and no longer caused trouble, and by the woman who won the man's love after all the pain had stopped. Their goal is to be poised. Being poised gives God's power a chance to rush through people and do what it pleases. He is calm, can think clearly, and quickly makes the right choice. He always pulls off a trick. Anger makes it hard to see. Poisoning the blood leads to many diseases and makes people make bad decisions that end in failure. Because it causes so much harm, it has been called one of the worst sins. The student finds out that sin means a lot more in philosophy than it did in the old teaching. Anything that isn't based on faith is wrong. He thinks that worry and fear are very bad things. They have the wrong kind of faith and use skewed mental pictures to make what they fear come true. The job of this person is to get rid of these enemies in the mind. When man has no fear, he is done. It is said by Maeterlinck that man is afraid of God. According to what we've read so far, the only way for a person to get over their fear is to face it. As Jehoshaphat and his army got ready to fight, they sang, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. But when they got there, their enemies had already wiped each other out, so there was no one left to fight. One woman, for instance, asked a friend to send a message to another friend. The woman was afraid to send the message because her mind was telling her, don't get involved in this affair, don't send that message. She was feeling bad because she had promised to do something. She finally made up her mind to face the lion and invoke the law of divine protection. It was time to give the message to the friend, so she did. When she was about to say it, her friend said, so-and-so has left town. This meant she didn't have to send the message because the situation meant the person had to be in town. It was no longer a problem because she was willing to do it and had no reason to be afraid. The student often puts off giving his example because he thinks it isn't finished. He should say, in the divine mind, there is only completion. This means that my demonstration is over. My perfect job, my perfect home, and my perfect health. Everything he wants is a perfect idea in God's mind that must come true in a perfect way through grace. He is grateful for what he has already received in the unseen and works hard to get ready for what he will receive in the visible. For one of my kids, they needed to show proof of money. She asked me why it wasn't done when she came over. I answered, maybe you leave things unfinished all the time and your subconscious has learned to skip over finishing. She told him, you're right. As the outside, so the inside. A lot of the time, I start things, but never finish them. I'll go home and finish something I started weeks ago. I know it will be a symbol of my protest. She worked hard at sewing, and the piece was finished quickly. Soon after, the money showed up in a very strange way. That month, her husband got paid twice. They sent word to keep it after he told them they were wrong. People who believe in what they're asking will receive it, because God makes his own pathways. People have asked me, what if someone has more than one talent? How does he know which one to pick? Demand to be shown for sure. Say to the infinite spirit, give me a clear lead, show me how to perfectly express myself and tell me which talent I should use right now. I've seen people jump into a new line of work with all the tools they need with little or no training. Say to yourself, 
I am fully equipped for the divine plan of my life, and don't be afraid to take advantage of chances. Some people are happy to give but not so good at receiving. They turn down gifts out of pride or for some other bad reason which blocks their paths and leaves them with little or nothing in the end. One example is a woman who had given away a lot of money and then got a gift of several thousand dollars. She said she didn't need it and wouldn't take it. Soon after, she couldn't pay her bills and ended up in debt for that amount. Man should be polite when the bread comes back to him on the water. You have given freely and you will receive freely. Giving and getting are always equal. People should give without thinking about what they will get in return, but they are breaking the law if they don't accept the gifts that come their way. All gifts come from God. People are just the messengers. The person who gives should never think about what they don't have. I didn't say, poor man, he can't afford to give me that, when the man gave me the one cent. Instead, I saw him as rich and successful, with plenty coming in. This thought was what made it happen. If you've been a bad consumer in the past, you need to change that. If someone gives you a postage stamp, take it and make room for others to receive. God loves both people who give and people who accept with joy. People often ask me why some people are born rich and healthy and others are born poor and sick. There is no such thing as chance. There is always a reason for every result. The law of life tells us the answer to this question. Man is born and dies many times before he finds the truth, which frees him. It's because he wants to pay off his karma bills or achieve his fate, and he's pulled back to the earth plane. In a past life, the man who was born rich and healthy saw pictures of health and wealth, while the man who was born poor and sick saw pictures of sickness and poverty. The sum of a person's inner views show up in the world on any level. Birth and death, on the other hand, are rules made by people since sin leads to death. The Adamic fall in awareness because people believed in two different kinds of power. Spiritual man, the real man, has no birth or death. He has never been born or died. He is the same now as he was in the beginning, and he always will be. In this way, the truth frees people from the law of fate, sin, and death, and it shows them who God made them to be. Man's freedom comes from achieving his fate and making the divine plan for his life come true. His Lord will tell him, Well done, good and loyal servant. You have been good over a few things. I will make you master over many things, even death itself. Enter into the joy of your Lord, eternal life. Denial and Affirmations is the fifth chapter. Part X. Denies and Affirmations. You will also decree something and it will come true for you. All the good that is meant to happen in a person's life has already happened in the thought of God and is released when a person recognizes it or says it out loud. So, he needs to be careful to only order that the holy idea come to life because his empty words often order failure or bad luck. Because of this, it is very important to word your requests properly as was explained in a previous chapter. If you want a house, a friend, a job, or anything else good, you should ask for the divine pick, like, infinite spirit, make way for my right home, my right friend, and my right job. The most important part of the sentence is the last part. I give thanks that it now manifests under grace in a perfect way. One woman I knew asked for $1,000, for instance, her daughter was hurt, and they got $1,000 to make up for it, so things did not go perfectly. You should have said, Infinite Spirit, I give thanks that the $1,000, which is mine by divine right, is now released and reaches me under grace in a perfect way. As you become more financially aware, you should ask that the huge amounts of money that are divinely yours reach you under grace in perfect ways. People can only let go of what they think is possible because the inner mind has limits on what it can expect. He needs to raise his expectations in order to gain more. 
Man so often sets limits on what he wants. As an example, a student asked for $600 by a certain date. Even though he got it, he later learned that he was very close to getting $1,000, but only got $600 because of what he said. Their limits were put on the Holy One of Israel. Being wealthy is a state of mind. In French culture, there is a story that shows this. As he walked along the road, a visitor stopped and told the poor man, My good friend, I see you are poor. Take this gold nugget and sell it. You will be rich forever, the man was told. He was thrilled with his good luck and took the nugget home. He got a job right away and was so successful that he didn't sell the bit. He got very rich over the years. He met a poor person on the road one day. My good friend, he said, I will give you this gold nugget. If you sell it, you will be rich for life. The beggar took the nugget, but when he had it priced, he learned it was only brass. The first man got rich because he thought the nugget was gold, which made him feel rich. Every man has a gold nugget inside him. It's his awareness of gold and wealth that brings them into his life. When man makes his claims, he starts at the end of his trip, which means he says he already has what he wants. I will answer before you call. Constantly confirming something sets it in the subconscious mind. If someone had full faith, they wouldn't need to say a statement more than once. People shouldn't beg or plead, but should instead thank those who have helped them over and over again. The desert will be happy and grow as much as a rose. This happiness that is still in the desert, in this state of mind, makes the way for freedom possible. It starts with an order and a demand. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It ends with praise, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Tell me what to do with the things I've made. So, prayer is both telling and asking for things, giving praise and thanks. The student has to convince himself that God can make anything possible. This is simple to say in a general sense, but it's a little trickier to do when there is a problem. One example was that a woman had to show a lot of money within a certain amount of time. Realization is expression, so she knew she had to do something to get one. She asked for a tip. A very pretty pink metal paper cutter caught her eye as she walked through a department shop. She felt like she had to go there. I don't have a paper cutter good enough to open letters with big checks, she thought. That's when she bought the paper cutter, which a more sensible person would have seen as a waste of money. She had a flash of a picture of herself opening an envelope with a big check in it when she held it in her hand. A few weeks later, she got the money. For her, faith was held together by the pink paper cutter. A lot of stories are told about how powerful the mind can be when faith guides it. For instance, a man was staying the night in a farmhouse. He felt like he was going to pass out in the middle of the night because the room's windows were nailed shut. He made his way to the window in the dark. He hit the pane with his hand because he couldn't open it. He let in lots of fresh air and had a great night's sleep. He broke the glass in a shelf and forgot to close the window all night. When he woke up the next morning, something was broken. For some reason, just thinking about oxygen gave him oxygen. Once a kid starts to show, he should never go back. The person who isn't sure shouldn't think that the Lord will give him anything. This wonderful thing was said by a student once. When I ask the father for something, I make it clear that I will not settle for less than what I've asked for. I will settle for more. So, man should never give in. After doing everything, stand. There are times when this is the hardest time to demonstrate. There is a strong urge to give up, go back, or make a deal. He serves someone who does nothing but stand there and wait. Some demonstrations happen right at the last minute, when people have already given up and are ready to let go. This gives infinite intelligence a chance to work. Man's dull desires are met with dull answers, and his restless desires are met with long delays or violent results. In one case, 
A woman asked me why she kept losing or breaking her glasses. She often told herself and other people, I wish I could get rid of my glasses, which made her very angry. Her anxious wish was violently granted. For what it was worth, she should have asked for perfect vision, but what she really wanted was to get rid of her glasses right away, so they kept breaking or getting lost. When you don't value something, like the woman who didn't value her husband, or when you're afraid of losing something, your mind creates a picture of loss. As soon as a student can let go of his trouble and cast his load, it will appear right away. One woman was outside during a very windy day, and her umbrella got blown inside out. She was about to call some people she had never met before, and she didn't want to show up with a broken-down umbrella. It wasn't hers, so she couldn't throw it away. She was so scared that she yelled, Oh God, take care of this umbrella. I don't know what to do. Suddenly, someone spoke from behind her and asked, Lady, do you want your umbrella fixed? There stood a man who fixed umbrellas. She said, Yes, of course I do. The man fixed the umbrella while she went inside to call someone, and when she came back, it was in good shape. When a person puts their umbrella or their problem in God's hands, there is always someone to fix it. One should always say yes after denying something. One late night, I was called on the phone to help a man I had never seen before. It looked like he was really sick. The thing I said was, I deny this appearance of disease. Because it's not real, it can't register in his mind. This man is an ideal thought in God's mind. He is pure matter that expresses beauty. He was much better by the next morning, and he was out taking care of business the next day. Since there is no time or place in the holy thought, the word goes straight to where it needs to go and doesn't come back empty. I have helped people in Europe, and the results were seen right away. A lot of people ask me what the difference is between seeing and imagining. Visioning is a spiritual process controlled by intuition or the superconscious mind, as opposed to visualizing, which is a mental process controlled by the aware mind. The student should train his mind to be open to these inspirations and follow clear paths to find the holy pictures. Men lose their fake wants when they can say, I desire only what God desires for me. Then the master builder, the God within them, gives them a new set of plans. God's plan for each person goes beyond what our minds can understand. It is always the square of life, with health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. Many men are building a house in their minds when they should be building a palace. Anyone in the class who tries to make an example will stop it with their thinking mind. I will speed it up, says the Lord. He should only act on gut feelings or clear signs. Rest in the Lord and be patient while you wait. Believe in Him too, and He will make it happen. I have seen the law work in the most amazing ways. One girl said she had to have a hundred dollars by the next day, for example. It was a very important loan that had to be paid off. It's never too late to speak the word and say that the supply is at hand. That night, she called me to tell me about the surprise. She said the idea came to her to look at some papers in her safe deposit box at the bank. There was a new $100 bill at the bottom of the box when she looked over the papers. She was shocked and said she was sure she hadn't put it there because she had read the papers so many times. It could have been a materialization, like when Jesus Christ made the loaves and food appear. When man gets to a certain point, his words will quickly come true. As with all of Jesus Christ's wonders, the fields will appear right away, ready to reap. The name of Jesus Christ alone has a huge amount of power. It means that the truth has been shown. He said, Whatsoever ye ask the Father, in my name he will give it to you. The power of this name raises the student into the fourth dimension, where he is freed from all astral and psychic influences, and he becomes unconditioned and absolute, as God himself is unconditioned and absolute. I have seen many healings accomplished by using the words, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Christ was both person and principle, and the Christ within each man is his Redeemer and salvation. The Christ within is his own fourth-dimensional self, the man made in God's image and likeness. This is the self which has never failed, never known sickness or sorrow, was never born, and has never died. It is the resurrection and the life of each man. No man cometh to the Father save by the Son means that God, the universal, working on the place of the particular, becomes the Christ in man, and the Holy Ghost means God in action. So daily, man is manifesting the Trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Man should make an art of thinking. The master thinker is an artist and is careful to paint only the divine designs upon the canvas of his mind, and he paints these pictures with masterly strokes of powder and decision, having perfect faith that there is no power to mar their perfection and that they shall manifest in his life the ideal made real. All power is given man through right thinking to bring his heaven upon his earth, and this is the goal of the game of life. The simple rules are fearless faith, non-resistance, and love. May each reader be now freed from that thing which has held him in bondage through the ages, standing between him and his own, and know the truth which makes him free free to fulfill his destiny, to bring into manifestation the divine design of his life, health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, denials and affirmations, for prosperity. God is my unfailing supply, and large sums of money come to me quickly, under grace in perfect ways, for right conditions. Every plan my Father in heaven has not planned shall be dissolved and dissipated, and the divine idea now comes to pass. For right conditions, only that which is true of God is true of me, for I and the Father are one. For faith, as I am one with God, I am one with my good, for God is both the giver and the gift. I cannot separate the giver from the gift. For right conditions, Divine love now dissolves and dissipates every wrong condition in my mind, body, and affairs. Divine love is the most powerful chemical in the universe and dissolves everything which is not of itself. For health. Divine love floods my consciousness with health and every cell in my body is filled with light. For eyesight. My eyes are God's eyes. I see with the eyes of spirit. I see clearly the open way. There are no obstacles on my pathway. I see clearly the perfect plan. For guidance, I am divinely sensitive to my intuitive leads and give instant obedience to thy will. For the hearing, my ears are God's ears. I hear with the ears of spirit. I am non-resistant and am willing to be led. I hear glad teedings of great joy. For right work, I have a perfect work in a perfect way. I give a perfect service for perfect pay, for freedom from all bondage. I cast this burden on the Christ within, and I go free.